Hi boys and girls, today we've got the Demore Engineering 1500.1 on the bench. Let's give it a go. Always remember to hook up your ground first. Okay, we've got the E1500 one hooked up on the bench. I've got the SMD 81 amp dyno as my load bank, the Audio Precision APX 515 as my measuring equipment. And I wanted to bring some, if you've been following this series, this is the fourth video in a series of uh, these bench tests. I wanted to bring some, some testing to the channel that's not just you know, power because um, a lot of people have done power testing videos and they're great, I love them. But uh, I wanted to give you a little bit more of an engineer's perspective. There's other tests that we do besides power that are very important to the way an amplifier sounds like distortion, signal to noise ratio, and things like this. So we're gonna do a few uh, of those tests here on my bench today so you can see what it's like um, to do those tests on our E-Series e amps. So our first test is gonna be distortion, total harmonic distortion, that's what THD stands for. It's the total of all the harmonics added up together, plus N, so plus noise. In this case, we're gonna use 100 hertz sine wave input. So I've got the crossover turned all the way up as high as it goes, which is 250 to low pass, so it's out of the way. I've got the infrasonic moved all the way to 10 hertz, so we've got 10 to 250 is where the sample play. We're gonna play 100 hertz right in the middle of that, and then we're going to turn up the input signal until it, it's putting out half power. That's gonna be our standard for these tests. What is the THD plus N at half power into four ohms? Uh, that's how we've been measuring them all so far. And we're going to do that on this one now. This amplifier is rated at 4 ohms at 525 watts. So we're going to go around 260, 270. And uh, that'll be half power at 4 ohms. And we'll see what kind of numbers we get. So yes, that THD plus N is the total of all the harmonics plus noise. So we're going to put in 100 hertz. So we're going to look for 200 hertz, 300 hertz, 400 hertz, 500 hertz how much of each of those frequencies is also coming out of the amplifier. The total of all of those, plus the noise, which is hiss and other random noises, that'll be the percentage that we see. Okay. So that's 31 watts, 49, 78, 125, 201, getting pretty close. That's 234. 277 close enough to half power so at half power four ohms are total harmonic distortion plus noise 0.15 percent so that's pretty awesome that means 99.85 percent of what's coming out of it is the pure 100 hertz tone that's going into it that little bit left over is the total of the harmonics plus any random noises so that's a great great number there good job 1500 Okay, now we will do the frequency response test. These are from, these sweeps here from the previous amplifiers, the 700 or the 750 and the 1000. Um, I will just go ahead and turn those off. And let's take a look at the 1500. So there it is. You can see our crossover right here at about 250 hertz. That's the minus 3 dB point. That's what the uh, crossover number represents, where it's minus 3 dB. So that is around 250. And pretty flat from there down to where are at minus 1 at 20 hertz. And our minus 3 is probably around 15. We can zoom in here and take a look. Minus 3 is at just over 14 hertz. So that this is the infrasonic filter down here doing this. Um, so that's, that's great. I would say this amplifier is uh, plus or minus a dB from, you know, below 20 hertz to, to above 200 hertz. So that's great. Uh, if we wanted to have some fun and just see the infrasonic filter, I can append this data. Let's just have some fun with it. I haven't done this in any of the other videos. We'll just move it around a little bit. So I'm going to move the infrasonic filter to about half, halfway up. There, you can see what it did. So, at halfway up now, that minus three is around 32. I'm move it up, turn it all the way up. I believe it's 50 hertz on this amp. Let's 
take a look at it. And right on the money, minus 3 dB at 50 hertz. So that's what the infrasonic does. It removes the very low frequencies. Now, if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that that word infrasonic is one of my pet peeves because uh, infrasonic is the correct term, and that's what we use here. And if you look that word up, it technically means a sound frequency lower than human hearing. So that's the correct definition. But, you know, a lot of manufacturers still say subsonic filter or subsonic frequencies. And this is just one of those audio idioms that, you know, maybe because subwoofer, subsonic, I don't know, but that word is technically completely incorrect and means a speed slower than the speed of sound. So if you want to keep your amplifier under, you know, 760 miles an hour, go ahead and turn that subsonic filter on. All right, so that's uh, the sweeps on that. Let's do some signal to noise ratio. This is going to be the loudest the amplifier can be compared to how quiet can the amplifier be. That's an important measurement. Besides how loud they are, we want to know how quiet they can be. This is kind of like our dynamic range here. So this test is going to be automated. I push go. It's going to uh, do you know, full output to uh, rate and power, and then it's going to mute, and it's going to take that difference, and that'll be the dB that we see. It happens really fast. Uh, and I don't know that this input level is going to get us to full power, so we might have to do it a few times. So let's try. I'm going to look at the scope over here for clipping. No clipping there, so it's got a little bit more. Let's go up here. Try it again. No clipping still. No clipping still, and that's as high as my generator will go. That's eight volts of input, so this amplifier can take over eight volts of input, no problem. I have to start turning the gain up now until I get a little clipping. So there's, yeah, there's a fair amount of clipping. So 108 dB between the loudest and the quietest, so that's a great, great number. Really good signal to noise on this amplifier. All right, let's get to the uh, the power the power testing. Let's do that. So we're set up at four ohms. Again, this is going to be an automated test. It's going to keep turning it up, turning it up, looking for one percent distortion or just the onset of clipping, and it's going to give us our power number. Um, I'm going to be watching this fluke meter. It's probably off the screen for battery voltage and. Uh, I'll be checking to make sure that when we land our maximum number, we're around 14.4. That's one thing the amp dyno does automatically, but I'm not using the amp dyno for, for this uh, show. We're going to use this one, Audio Precision. Try that one more time, reset my meter. So we got 590 watts RMS at 14.4, and uh, again, I think it was rated at 525, so great result, 10% overage or more. Good job, 1500. All right, let's do the 2 ohm test. Same test, but we're going to do 2 ohms, so I've got to switch my load bank, amp dyno, to 2. And let's run this one. One thousand and thirty watts at fourteen point three. I'm going to turn on my power supply just a little bit. See if we can get closer to fourteen four. And we'll we can see the difference between fourteen three and fourteen four. So fourteen three was a thousand and thirty. Fourteen four is. 1044 so there we go uh, I believe this amplifier is rated at 950 at 2 ohms we did 1044 great job and finally we will do the 1 ohm power test switch my load bank to 1 ohm
power supply, make sure we don't go below 14.4. Set that and run it. What do we get? One thousand six hundred and ninety-eight watts at fourteen point three three three. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit more to get to fourteen four. It's just gonna give us a couple watts, I'm sure. We gotta see seventeen hundred, right? We're at sixteen ninety-eight. We can't leave it like that. Here we go. Uh, seventeen hundred on the dot. 14.35 volts, so there's still a little more gas in it, but that's fine. Great result, 1500 watt rated amp. Did um, more than 10% over, so there you go. That will complete the testing of the E1500.1. Let me know what you think. Hope you guys are liking these videos, and um, see you next time.